All right, so let's take a look at an example of how we fill up a Mudoku table and then I'll introduce the concentrations, which as you'll find out, once you have the Mudoku table, getting the concentrations are gonna be, it's gonna be a rather trivial task at that point. But first we need to get the table done. Okay, so here's the example. We have a solid C2H5NO2, also known as nitroethane, and specifically we have five grams of this solute. The mass of the solution has been measured to be 35.12 grams, and we know that 10 ml of solution equals 11.7 grams. And if you look carefully at this, this is telling you that 11 grams of solution are present in 10 ml of solution. So technically speaking, this last column is the density of the solution, right? In essence, if you divide 11.7 grams by 10 ml, you'll end up with the density of the solution. All right, so we're gonna fill up the Mudoku table and we need to start filling it up with what we have. As of now, we have the mass of the solute and we have the mass of the solution. So we wanna input those two values in the table, mass of solute and mass of solution. All right, so now that we have that, there's a few things we could do. Because of solute being able to switch over from mass to moles, we could do that. We could find the moles of the solute by using the mass. For solution, we can do that because there is no direct conversion between mass and moles. But with the mass of the solution and the density of the solution, we can switch over to volume. That we could do. Additionally, if you look at the column of mass, we have two out of three. So here you could actually use that information to find the mass of the solvent. And in particular, um, first I'm gonna find out the moles, but I want you to see like the different things that you could do from the beginning. And you don't need to do exactly this in the same order that I'm approaching it, but you know, uh, eventually you're gonna have to go through those individual steps. So let's first find out the moles of solute. We have the five grams of C2H5NO2. To switch over to moles, you're gonna to need to determine the molar mass of C2H5NO2, which happens to be 75.07 75 grams of solute per mole of solute. You place the 75.07 grams in the bottom so that the grams cancel out. And what you have now is the moles of the solute. So you wanna write this down. And it happens to be 0 0.0666 moles. Um, I recommend that you don't truncate the numbers too much, you know, probably write, I would actually recommend writing at least four decimal places worth of numbers so that you don't introduce too much error in your further calculations. Uh, ideally, if I were you, I would try to keep the full number that the calculator is giving you. All right, but we're going to introduce that number in the table. So this is how many moles of solid we have. Okay, now, as I was saying, we have the mass of the solute, we have the mass of the solution. We could use that piece of information to find the mass of the solvent because we know the mass of solute plus mass of solvent equals the mass of the solution. So to solve for the mass of the solvent, all we need to do is subtract the mass of the solute from the mass of the solution. And so we have 35.12 grams minus five grams being equal to the mass of the solvent, or in other words, the mass of the solvent equals 30.12 grams. All right, so now with that information, we fill in this portion of the table, specifically the mass column. All right, now we have the mass of the solvent. So one thing that we could do is go after the moles of the solvent. And in the case where I don't tell you anything in regard to the solvent, it is safe for you to assume that the solvent is going to be water. So the 30.12 grams of solvent is technically 30.12 grams of water. Divide this by the molar mass of water, which is 18.02 grams per mole, and this will give you the moles of water that you have present. And as I depicted in the previous video, the moles of the solvent are indeed greater than the moles of the solute. That's kind of what you want to see to make sure that you chose the right substance as your solvent and your solute. All right, we're gonna input that value right here, 1.671. Now to get the moles of the solution, all you have to do is add up all of the values for the moles of the solute and solvent. So moles of solution is the moles of solute plus the moles of solvent. 
So we input those two values, 0.0666 plus 1.671, and we find out that this equals 1.738 moles. Now, when you guys perform these calculations and I ask you to complete this table on the homework, it will be important that you keep track of the sig fix. I'm being a little bit cavalier and a little bit careless about the sig fix in the calculations right here, um, but just be certain to keep track of them all the way through um, and even though you will be you know rounding up or rounding down the numbers when you do the calculations for all of them it's important that you keep all the digits that your calculator gives you just to avoid any issues with rounding up or down okay just be careful with that all right so we're going to input the 1.738 moles of solution and now what we're going to do is convert the mass of the solution into volume of solution, specifically liters of solution. And for that, we're gonna use the density. We're gonna divide by 11.7 grams, and we're gonna multiply by 10 mLs. Or alternatively, we divide by 1.17 grams and multiply by one mL. And right here, we're gonna divide by 1,000 mLs to turn this into liters. All right, so now we have the volume of the solution in liters, 0 0.0300 liters. You may be asking yourself, why did I go to liters and not just leave it in mLs? And the reason why is because of one of the terms in the concentrations that I'm going to be describing next. Specifically, we have a concentration known as molarity. Now, this big M right here stands for molarity. And specifically, molarity stands for moles of solute over liters of solution. So what you want to do is divide the moles of the solute by the liters of solution, not mLs, but actual liters. So we're gonna have 0 0.0666 moles divided by 0 0.03 liters. And when you carry the calculation, you find out that the molarity, which by the way, you abbreviate with capital M, right? So you don't need to write molarity, but actually capital M is what you want here, is 2.22. And that's the value for the molarity. Now the next thing is known as molality, and the molality has uh, the symbol little m. Molality stands for moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. Now this one is the tricky one. Um, so the mass of the solvent, well, we already have that. The mass of the solvent is 30, well, it's 30.12 grams, but we need to convert that to kilograms. So we're going to divide this by a thousand to get it to kilograms. And it's important that you don't forget to do this. Otherwise, your molality is going to be way off. It's going to be off by a factor of a thousand. All right. But now that we have the kilograms of solvent, we simply plug in the, the moles of the solute, 0 0.0666, by the kilograms of solvent, 0 0.03012. And we find out the molality, which is abbreviated with little m after the number, 2.21. One thing I want to point out right now is that, generally speaking, the molarity and molality values are going to be close to each other. Uh, maybe not as close as these two numbers are. These are actually pretty close. But you should not expect, for instance, to have a molarity of like 1.2 and end up with a molality of 0.3. That's probably too big of a change. But, uh, you know, the values are going to be kind of close to each other. So it's a way to check whether your calculations are making sense or not. The next step of concentration is the is called the percent uh, mass by mass. And specifically, the percent mass, mass by mass is the mass of the solute over the mass of the solution times 100%. So here we just look for the mass of the solute, 5 grams, mass of the solution, 35.12 grams, and simply divide them from each other, multiply them by 100, and yield the value in terms of a percentage, so 14.2. And by the way, when you multiply this by 100, you're already applying the percentage. There's some calculators that do have the percentage sign applied to them. Do not carry this calculation and then press the percentage. You'll be basically doing this like twice and you'll end up off by a factor of 100. So simply, if I were you, I would divide 5 by 35.12 and then multiply by 100. And that's automatically the percentage. Okay, so that's the value for the percentage. Mass of solute over mass of solution. Now, uh, here we have a few other ones which are interesting. Now, this is mass per volume, and generally, for this percentage, you want it to be kind of um, a number that's not very small or very large. So here, in order for that to work out, being that the mass of the solute is 
five grams, um, probably it's best to depict the volume in milliliters as opposed to liters, because the liters will make this number a bit too large, especially after you multiply by 100. So divide the five grams by 30 ml and multiply by 100 to get a percentage of 16.7. Usually, if I do ask you for the percent mass per volume, I am going to tell you what I want the volume in, because it's not obvious what that might be when you do the calculation. So to avoid any confusions, I'll be providing you with that piece of information. But what stands still is that the mass of the solute has to be divided by the volume of the solution, okay, times 100%. All right, then we have these other two units of percent by mass. Now, these ones typically we don't use unless we have very little solute present in solution. They're called the part per million or PPM and the part per billion or PPB. And they have the same format as the percent by mass, except that instead of multiplying by 100, you multiply by a million or 10 to the 6. And instead of multiplying by 100 or a million, you multiply by 10 to the 9th or a billion for part per billion. And so simply you input the values, 5 divided by 35.12 times a million, that's automatically the PPM value, 5 divided by 35.12 times a billion, those values are automatically the PPB. And as you can see, these values are extremely large because they are meant to be used with small solid amounts, small solid concentration. So you may encounter them, maybe not, uh, they're basically the same thing as the percent by mass except that you multiply by a million or a billion instead of a hundred all right and one more uh, this big X is actually supposed to be the symbol Chi a Greek letter and it's known as the mole fraction now the mole fraction in particular is going to be the moles of solute over the moles of solution so now the amounts are in terms of moles so here, what you want to do is divide the 0 0.0666 moles of solute by the 1.738 moles of solution, and that's it. Oh, and by the way, this is moles of solution, not moles of water, because okay, so it's a little mistake on my part. Uh, okay, so the moles of solution. So you're going to get a value, and this value is actually unitless. It's the only one among the rest of the concentrations that doesn't actually have any units. But the one thing that should be true of the mole fraction is that every time you will get a value that is less than 1. All right, and that pretty much about does it. Um, technically, you could also look at percent volume by volume, but those would be percentages that you would only obtain if you're dealing with uh, liquids mixing, you know, being mixed with some other liquid, like alcohol solutions, for instance. All right, so we'll stop right here, and in the next video, we'll show you a second example of Mudoku tables plus concentration, as well as dilutions.